Okay, quick video for today. I'm going to be resoldering some capacitors on this video card. This is a uh, GeForce 4 MX420, an AGP card. Uh, not actually a very good one, actually. It's kind of more power of a GeForce 2, but it is the graphics card that I'm using just because I had it lying around in my Windows 98 machine. Uh, I have tested it. It works, but one issue it has is one of the capacitors has actually started to burst out the top. Although the card is still working, you can see that capacitor still clearly starting to go. And since I have some uh, soldering work to do coming up on the uh, Mac Classic 2 video, uh, if that's up, I'll put a link up in the corner for that. Uh, since I've got some soldering work to do on that, I thought this would be a good practice project to do since this is not the most important card to me. And uh, I haven't really done any soldering in a couple of years, so uh, this will be good to get back in the swing of things. This is also through-hole soldered, which is a lot easier, so that'll be kind of the training wheels before I do some of the uh, surface mount type stuff on the uh, Mac Classic 2. So, to that end, I've got everything ready here. We've got my soldering iron. Got flux pen. Some desoldering braid if I need it. Some solder that's probably not the right size for this, but it's what I have around. And the capacitors, because uh, the cheapest way to get them was in this ridiculously large bulk pack. So I may just replace that one, or I may replace all of them, because uh, DigiKey had a lot of them. And of course, this being uh, the internet, I'm sure that uh, if this video gets any traction, you in the comments will be very free to let me know absolutely everything that I have done wrong, of which I'm sure there will be plenty, so have fun. I do have on this GoPro a new uh, macro lens adapter of some sort, so hopefully this will get a little better close uh, work, work on this, but that's still going to be a work in progress. That's why I'm trying it out on this little mini video. And again, this being the internet, I'm sure that if this video gets any traction at all, there'll be plenty of people willing to tell me everything I'm doing wrong. So, have fun with that. I wonder if I don't have the heat set high enough. feel like it's flowing sufficiently. Probably a heat question. I think I've eaten that too long.
Well, it's melting my solder just fine, but it is not melting their solder, so I do fear that perhaps this graphic card may have some fairly high temp lead free solder on it. Which makes life a little more difficult. Or it might be actually a little bit, maybe, maybe, maybe. Good thing we're replacing this capacitor because I don't think it's going to like all this heat. Opponent's definitely warming up. I'm not sure that's actually the most helpful thing for me. But. It's pretty hard to tell, but I think I'm making very, very slow progress, especially that one on the left has a lot less filled in there than it did before. They're on the right, I got some oxidation all over it, so that's fun. <sighs> well, definitely on brand for me to pick as my practice thing something that has high temperature solder, which I guess makes sense for a graphics card. Um, I don't know for sure that it does, but I am seeing uh, people mention online when having trouble with doing graphics card work that that can be an issue and sometimes they've got a ground plane that has a lot of thermal mass all kinds of things like that all right let's keep at this And to anyone who asks, uh, yes, this soldering iron in particular is fairly new. I got it as a Christmas present maybe a year ago, maybe, maybe two. Um, and it's much nicer than my old Radio Shack soldering iron that I've had since I was a teenager. Uh, there's still plenty of nicer soldering irons, but I don't solder things that often, so... It's probably just fine for me. I think I really got that one on the left, so now it's the one on the right that I have to focus on. Man, it takes this forever to heat up. And this one is on the highest temperature that my particular setting iron will go to. It's just not heating up that joint enough, jeez. Try retuning the tip again. That did help a little bit last time. Probably just mixing some of my solder with their solder to lower the melting point. At least lower the average melting point. Didn't too much on there. I think that's the problem. And I mentioned how I don't do this that often. The entire board is getting hot and the capacitor leads are not even budging in the hole. I don't know what to make of that. Right, I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch to a much larger tip on the suggestion of the internet. Uh, just because I'm probably not getting the heat into here fast enough. Because uh, apparently graphics cards may use an additional copper layer that wicks away the heat too quickly. Uh, and I don't have like a rework station to be given it like forced hot air from below or anything. Looks like I did make some progress a little bit. You can just barely see that left one is now moving a little more freely. The right one, I still haven't gotten a budge at all. So hopefully if I cool down the iron, switch to a bigger tip, 
Hopefully that'll let me get it. Okay, we're back and ready to try this for the uh, remaining lead again with a new longer tip. Just as before, we're going to tin it. The one pin is totally loose, the other one is not. Remember when I said this was going to be quick? doesn't budge. It's crazy. Okay, it's just barely starting to lift, even on the bad one. Why? This is being really impressively terrible to work on, but it is starting to show progress just the slightest bit. So uh, we keep at it, I guess. I'm actually at this point, I'm literally applying downward pressure on the pin. It helps that if it gets liquid for just a second, it'll go through. Which is a pretty desperate way to go about it. I think I'm actually pushing it through a little bit more that way. And yeah, I've got some max heat broad chisel tip. Probably what this needs is actually a rework station, which is not an ability I have. So, so much for this just being easy practice, because it's just one capacitor, right? How hard can one capacitor be? It's through hole and everything. Silly. It is so, so in there. At this point, I don't know how much damage I'm doing to the rest of the board either. See, there it is wicking up there, but I'm pretty sure it's just mine wicking up there and not... Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ah, there we go. It wasn't just mine wicking up there, so there we go. One capacitor actually finally removed. Goodness gracious. All right, and the hole that was behaving itself, that is actually open, but the other hole... Uh, still needs to be cleared, not surprisingly. So let's see if I can wick that out. Come on, get out of there. Be empty, please. There it is. Now the solder brick's actually doing what solder brick's supposed to do. Okay, so we need to really clean the fuck out of this. It's my PA. Ugh, look at that. Q-tip's all brown already. Hopefully I didn't screw up the board too much. Actually, that side looks okay. But again, that's why this was my practice board, because this was never a particularly good graphics card. It's just one that's convenient to have around for the Windows 98 machine. So now, 
We've got our old capacitor and our new capacitor. Same form factor. Now the interesting thing is the board markings are kind of strange because we've got the white side of the electrolyte capacitor, which is usually where you would put the negative terminal. Got this little plus down the corner here, which was a little confusing to me because the stripes on the uh, existing capacitors also indicate negative, but they were lining up with where the plus is. So I'm going to follow the white patch because that lines up with where the stripe was on the capacitor that was just taken out and appears to line up with the stripe on the others that are on the board as well. So that's going to mean that it would essentially go here. Along what's positive, stripe is negative. It's going to go through that way. So everything else will be gold. This one will be white, but it's all the same specs. I'm going to pre-trim this down. That might actually be a little on the short side, but we'll see. Ah, I trimmed that too short. Fortunately, I bought way more of these than I actually need. That's more reasonable. I'm going to flux the board. That's enough to just have one side in. Should have used like a third hand or something, or bent the leads, but oh well. All right, not the prettiest in the world, but it's there. It's the first one I've done in a while. Yeah, the thing isn't sitting perfectly straight because I was just holding it with my finger, but it is in there. Let's see if I can wash it now. So yeah, it's a little crooked, and the solder is not perfect. It's not scalloped in the way it's supposed to be. But for my first one in like three or four years, I think that's not too bad. Of course, the real test is going to be, does it still work? All right, time to put the card back in and see if I did anything right. Okay, ready to power it on, or at least try to. All right, and so far, we're getting video output, which either means that it worked, or uh, that capacitor was unimportant and uh, isn't needed to get to the post screen. Starting up Windows 98. And for whatever reason, the boot screen doesn't always show up, but I think that's just this Windows 98 install. And we also get to a desktop. Which, yeah, either I did the repair right, so hooray, or that capacitor just isn't needed. Um, let's see if we can do something that requires 3D acceleration. That'll be a good test. Let's do some uh, Quick 3 Arena. 
which would have been uh, not a, the most demanding game today, but for this computer it is, and for this card it uh, should let it stretch its legs a little bit. I do find it funny that it's Demo Shield being used for the commercial CD release for this. Um, actually, for right now, yeah, 25 megabyte install size. We'll do the minimum just because it'll get us to something quickly. Sure. Can you restart? Fine, okay. You can restart. We'll play nice. Alright, let's launch some Quake 3 Arena. Yeah, 3D graphics should be a pretty good test of this. Well, the video plays. Not with VSync, but it plays. Uh, 640 by 480. Let's do 800 by 600. I feel crazy. Uh, texture detail? Yeah, we'll leave it like that. This doesn't have that much fear. Yeah, we'll just do a demo file. Loading stuff off the CD. I don't think I've ever done a minimal install of Quick 3 before, so this is my first experience with the load times straight from CD. And yeah. Uh, OpenGL certainly appears to be OpenGLing, so 3D parts of the card work. Not at the highest of frame rates, but again, as I said, this card kind of sucks, but it works, so that's good. Well, thanks for watching. I don't know where exactly this channel is going to go uh, in the future, hence the name, but uh, if you like what you see, give a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, have a good one.